I'm Anne. And I'm Simon. And we run Van Folk, a camper van conversion company based in Bristol. And this is one of our vans, Ray of Sunshine. Did you know, if you list your van with Outdoorsy, you can earn up to $50,000 a year. Check the link in the description to find out how. We've been professionally converting vans now since March 2020, and this is van number six. We hire this one out via Quirky Campers, which we run as a sideline to our core business, which is to convert vans every three months and sell them. That means we sell four vans a year, converted to a very similar spec to this one. You can find details of all of our conversions on Instagram at Vanfolk Bristol. But for now, on to the tour of Ray of Sunshine. So Ray of Sunshine is a 2015 VW Crafter medium wheelbase. We purposefully chose the medium wheelbase over the long wheelbase. Um, we just find it to be a bit easier to manoeuvre, especially when we have other people using it as well. It's just a bit less daunting. Um, so the layout we've gone for is kind of trying to optimise the space as much as possible. So we've got a convertible bed with a table that pushes down to form the bed. Um, which means you've got kind of a living room area and then you've got a six foot king size bed um, to sleep in. And then obviously you've got quite a good size kitchen with a Belfast sink, proper gas hob, um, loads of storage, and then obviously the wood burner taking centre stage in the corner. So when we were designing the kitchen layout for Ray of Sunshine, um, it was always kind of the thing that was most important to us. We really love cooking and we wanted to have a kitchen that was big enough to kind of do everything we wanted with and have enough storage most importantly. Um, so L-shaped kitchen, we've got a two burner gas hob over here and the gas locker which I'll show you in a minute is directly below it. Um, we've got a Belfast sink which has become a bit of an iconic um, part of our sort of style. Um, it's fairly heavy um, but the overall weight of the van is actually still well with under the maximum range so we'll talk about that a bit later. Um, but in terms of storage we've got two drawers here so you've got cutlery drawers in here just some bamboo dividers the drawers are on jumbo super strong magnetic catches we've tried a lot of magnetic catches in our time um, because we were so desperate not to kind of have this look on all of the drawers and these actually work really really well they've, um, they've not failed us yet even if you use spin around the corner really fast um, got kind of utensils bits and bobs in there and then this one is on a child lock because it's a bit heavier so just in case we've got the fridge in here and um, so this is a Dometic tropical thermoelectric cool box fridge and it opens from the top it's pretty spacious um, you can probably get enough food in here for about a week and with having the hookup cable and the solar and being able to charge the battery by driving we, we don't tend to run out of power for it um, we've also got some ventilation holes here because it gets fairly warm um, so good thing to bear in mind so that just goes on there and then in the corner here we've got a handy little tea towel rail um, we've also got space underneath for chopping boards placemats trays anything thin We've got a corner cupboard here. So we've got storage for dry food in here and then we've got pots and pans and then under you can just see the gas locker. Um, so you can quite easily just open the door and change that. So as you can see under the sink here, we've got 25 litre fresh water tank in the back and a 10 litre waste tank in the front. So the fresh water tank is connected, it's, it's got a whale pump inside it and that's connected to the tap by an electric inline water pressure switch. So um, essentially it only starts working once you turn the water on so you can hear it. It's quite noisy um, we'd love to find one that was a bit quieter um, but thankfully it does only turn on when the water's on so it's literally only for a few seconds that drains into the wastewater tank 
and you can essentially just pull the pipe out of that to empty it and same with the fresh water tank you just take the pump out to fill it up and it's just super easy so you can constantly monitor what your water levels are doing so above the kitchen we've got some more storage we've got a spice rack here and then um, a slightly bigger version above where we've got books plants salt and pepper um, you can put pretty much anything up here and it won't slide out and then we've got the rail above here which we do tend to remove of things before we start driving it's really good if you're kind of in a campsite for a few nights or you're staying somewhere for a bit of time and it's just nice to be able to kind of hook your mugs up there so that you've got easy access we also have a sort of drying rack contraption so you can dry plates on and then any plants or herbs um, that you want to keep in there We've also got our blinds, which um, are fairly simple to make. So it's just two sheets of fabric, essentially, um, stitched together with a bit of wooden doweling in the bottom to keep it straight. Um, and they are on a leather, um, a leather sort of tie. And then this is attached on with poppers onto the wood. Um, so they just roll up and we've got those on the back of the van as well. So with the electrics in Ray, we decided to try and keep things as simple as possible. So they're simple, easy to use, especially for those people that aren't quite as acquainted with van life as others. So here we've got a leisure battery under the seats that's charged in three different ways. We've got a solar panel, a 320 watt solar panel on the roof. Um, a split charge that comes from the leisure battery and the vehicle battery in the front and a 240 volt charger on the side. So to get to the electric cupboard, the table just swivels out the way and then we've got all these cupboards under the seat. So in here you've got your main 12 volt fuses and the 12 volt isolator which isolates the power to, from the leisure battery to everything. This little guy here is your battery monitor, so that tells you if you're charging up and how much power you've got. This one is for the inverter. And this is the system for the split charge. So this isolates your vehicle battery in the split charge. Uh, we generally turn this one off whenever we leave in the van for a long time, just in case it tries to run our battery flat. And then up here in the other cupboard, we have your 240 volt setups. This is your main 240 volt fuse box and then your solar charge controller, which manages all your solar power. So when we decided to put a uh, convertible bed in Ray of Sunshine instead of a fixed bed, we really didn't want to lose out on any storage space. We have done conversions before with fixed beds and you get an amazing amount of sort of garage style storage underneath there. We really wanted to try and keep as much as possible of that. So we've got um, storage all the way through under the seat, so that's six foot of storage. So under this one, for example, this is a really great place for bedding. You can access it from the top as well, which means you can just kind of get it out really easily when you're turning um, the seats into bed. And then you've got a slightly wider one on this side and in there we just put all of our camping gear, so table and chairs, barbecue, fire pit that kind of thing just behind me we've got some little cupboards here so this is a bit of a shelf which sort of acts a bit like a bedside table when you're in bed mode but it's also just a nice little mug stand for having your coffee in the morning if you're reading a book and then in here you've got three cupboards um which we store anything in really books the projector candles anything you want above me we've got the overhead cupboards we tend to, um, if we're going away, kind of put our clothes in bags and then just put them straight into the overhead cupboard so we don't have any suitcases lying around. We have realised since we've made these that they're probably not quite big enough. Um, so we have since, when we've been making these, kind of brought them out further and made them deeper. Um, but they're pretty simple, open like that, and you can pop your clothes in. Side, we've got some storage again. This one opens from the side. That's got the toilet in. So this is a Thetford porta potty. It literally just slides out. It opens out to look like a kind of normal loo on the top. Pretty handy if you're in the middle of nowhere and it's the middle of the night and you don't really want to go anywhere. It's got a flush here. 
and then basically the top, the white bit, separates from the grey bit, and the grey bit is the waste tank, and you just take that and empty it out um, down a grey water disposal or down literally down an a loop. And then on this side, we've got um, a sort of cleaning cupboard, for want of a better word, that's also got the mains cable in there you keep a dustpan and brush in there you've got the ventilation from the fridge so it's got a bit of space to come out at and whilst we're here i'll just show you we've got a usb charging point here to charge your phone and mains plugs um if you're either hooked in um at a campsite or you've got the inverter on and you can charge your laptop or your phone there so we're just going to give you a quick demonstration of how you turn the table into the bed setter. So to start with, you've got a little lever here that you just undo and then this guy wiggles off. And the same with this lever down here, that one slides off. You should be able to just slide it onto those rests out of the way. And then under the covers there, M's got the final two panels for the bed. And these again just slot on the ends. The cushions just literally pull into the middle and then the side ones squish in as well. And there you have your bed. So once you're all set up in bed mode and you've got all your duvets out and your blankets, our favourite bit of the van is the projector. So we've got a projector screen just up here on some hooks and that literally just rolls down. And then we've got a Kodak Luma mini projector here. We literally just rest it on here and cozy up with a film. So when we first came round to installing the fire, we were fairly daunted by the task. Um, and there is quite a lot to think about it. There's safe distances for the fire and the tiles, uh, the hearth distance, uh, the structure underneath to make sure that this isn't going to fly anywhere in case of an accident, um, and also the thickness of the tiles and the fireboard behind. Um, but as with anything, if you break it down into simple steps into each thing one at a time, it does kind of click into place and it isn't quite as difficult as you'd first imagine. And when it comes to installing it, you've also got the flue up the top just to make sure that that's aligned perfectly. Thanks so much for watching our tour of Ray of Sunshine. It's been a bit of a full circle moment for us because we actually bought Nate Murphy's van conversion guide about three years ago now, didn't we? Um, and now we're doing this full time and absolutely loving it. So um, if you want to keep up to date with what we're doing, we're on Instagram at Bristol. Feel free to drop us a message, ask us if you've got any questions about the van, and yeah, we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you hadn't noticed, we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van. It has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams, also 25 video tutorials which are specifically for the ebook buyer. Creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project. But I really believe, and I've seen it time and time and time again, that with the right information, anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.